In this example, we have this game object that has a couple of childs, these cubes that you can see here in the scene. And what I wanted to do is to turn this game object on and off every certain period of time. For example, one second. So let's see how to solve this problem. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. And in the corner, I'm going to leave you a playlist with more videos about Unity. So first, we're going to create a new script. Right click, create c -sharp script. Let's call it, let's call it turn on and off repeatedly. Now we need to assign this script to the game object from the scene. We can't assign this script to the same game object that we are going to deactivate because when the object is inactive, all the script that has assigned will no longer execute. So I'm going to create a new uh, empty game object. I'm going to call it script. And then I'm going to assign the script to this new game object. So let's open the script in Visual Studio. So first in a script, we need to define a reference to store the game object we want to activate and deactivate through code. So here I'm going to find a new game object variable. Game object, let's call it uh, target object. Now this new variable uh, is currently empty. As I defined it as public, it will appear here in the inspector. And as you can see, it's nothing assigned to it. So it's important to initialize this field because otherwise we will get an old reference exception when we try to use it. There are several ways to initialize a variable. I'm going to leave it a playlist in the corner. But for now, I'm just going to take the game object that I want it to be stored in this variable and I'm going to assign it to the field. Now we have this game object stored in this variable and we can use it. Now for the next step, I'm going to define a new function that will uh, change the state of the object. And that is, if the game object is active in hierarchy, I'm going to deactivate the object. But if the object is inactive in hierarchy, I'm going to activate it. This will be the mission for our function. So let's create a new function, void, and uh, let's call it change state of game object. You can name it whatever you want. But here, what I'm going to do is to use the reference of this uh, game object. And with the dot operator, I'm going to execute the set active function passing as parameter. Since I want the object to have the opposite state to the one that uh, currently has, I'm going to pass the following as parameter target object dot active in hierarchy. But I'm going to include this sign at the beginning. So all of this is the opposite state to the one that the object currently has. If the object is active, that means that uh, this state is true. All of this will be false. And if the state of the object is false, all of this will be true. Let's call this function in start to see what it's currently doing. So here we are calling the function. Uh, the game object is currently active. We enter in the play mode. And when the function is executed, the object is deactivated. Now let's make another test, but uh, with the object initially inactive. Let's enter in the play mode. And as you can see, the object was activated. So the function is working properly. Now we need to call this function repeatedly every certain period of time. We can do this in several ways, for example, using coroutines. But in this case, I want to use a very simple method that is the invoke repeating function. So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to write invoke repeating, open and close parentheses. And here we need to pass three parameters. The first is the name of the method that, that we want to invoke. In our case, this one here. I'm going to copy this, this name. And in quotations, I'm going to paste this name, then comma. The second parameter is the initial delay. For example, here we can write one second. And the last parameter is the repeat rate. For example, if we write here one second, this function is going to be called every one second. So we save the changes and hit play. Now, as you can see, the object is turning on and off every one second. We can also define a float variable to introduce the, the repeat time in the inspector. For example, here we can define a float called uh, repeat, repeat time equals one second. And then use this variable in the last parameter of the invoke repeating function. Save the changes. And now here in the inspector, we can write, for example, 0.25. Hit play. And now the objects will turn on and off using this rate. So that's all for this video. I hope you found it useful. Please subscribe and we we'll see each other in the next video.